Hey guys, Robbie Webster here, and today I'm going to be giving you another Blu-ray and DVD collection update, and this update has a lot of movies in it that I really love. I think I love, like, just about every movie in here. I don't think there's anything... Yep, I love everything in this update. Um, there's no stinkers, and nothing that I think is mediocre, just all stuff that I really like. So let's get started with my favorite movie from 2013. Now, um, I know in my top 10 video I said that was mud, but over time things have changed and I now consider 12 Years a Slave to be the best movie of 2013. Um, I just think it's such a profound and uh, powerful film. I'm so happy I'm finally able to own it on Blu-ray. Um, but yes, this is a, it's a, a story of, it's a true story based on the book that the man was actually able to write. Yeah, Solomon Northup. I just wanted to make sure I had his name because you guys should definitely look this guy up and read about his life. It's amazing, an amazing story. He, he wrote a book about his life, um, was able to get it published, which is just unbelievable. But um, it's directed by Steve McQueen. It's, it, it's about a man who was ki basically kidnapped. Uh, he, was a, he was a free black man um, in the mid to late 1800s, mid 1800, 1841. He was a free man. So... He wasn't a slave, but he was kidnapped and forced into slavery for 12 years. I mean, this guy had um, his own, he was an established, like a wealthy man. Uh, he had a family, a wife and kids, and he, he was taken away from them for 12 years. And uh, just a powerful, powerful film with an amazing cast. Uh, so I highly recommend that you uh, check this one out. All right, the next movie I have here is one that I just watched a couple of days ago, and uh, it's a pretty new release movie. Uh, I think they put it out, yeah, right here it says, The Perfect Gift for Mother's Day, because it's a romance movie, and it has like a $10 off uh, card for 1-800-Flowers, so yeah, I don't think I'll use that. They're a little expensive for me, but uh, yeah, it's a romance, but it's pretty good. Um, it's it's a, kind of a unique movie, and um, I like the, I, I saw the last two movies this guy did, Up in the Air and Juno. What's the name of the director? Uh, I'm not even, I, I'm honestly, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't know the name of the director, but I've liked the other films that he's done, so I decided to give this one a chance. Uh, it stars Kate Winslet and Josh Brolin. I'm not really a big Kate Winslet fan either, but she's actually good in this one. She's good in a few of the movies. that I like her in a few movies, but a lot of the other stuff I find is a bit overrated. Um, and I, I, I'm just not a huge fan of her. But yeah, Josh Brolin, I think, is a great actor. But what happens is... Um, the mom is basically a shut-in. She has, a, a, I think, a 12 or a 10-year-old son. Uh, he's a fairly young son, and he basically takes care of his mom because she's, uh, she's just emotionally withdrawn. She has a lot of anxiety problems, and they only leave the house like once a month to, get, to go to the store and stock up on supplies um, because she just hates going out of, this, out of the house. And um, on one of these trips to the store... Uh, this man, Josh, played by Josh Brolin, approaches the boy when he's looking at comic books um, and tells him that he needs help. And he tells him, can your mom, he basically tells him, your mom's going to give me a ride. And he forces them to give him a ride and he makes them take him back to their house. And it turns out it's because he uh, escaped from prison. Um, and this man has had a tragic story and he was in prison, uh, but he seems like a decent man. And you kind of have to watch the movie to learn more about him, but... Um, basically, uh, a, a romance starts to, uh, emerge between, um, the kid's mom and the guy who escaped from prison. Uh, so he's basically just hiding out at their house. And it's just, I, I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. Um, uh, I'd, I'd recommend seeing it. But yeah, this would probably make it into the top 20 of the year last year. Um, yeah, it was, it wasn't one of the very best, but it was worth watching. So I, I recommend it. All right, next movie I have here. This is one that would actually break into my top 10. I'm so glad I finally got to see it. I'm just disappointed that it's from Walmart because it has a stupid sticker on the slipcover and it doesn't come off without ruining the slipcover. It leaves a bunch of residue, so I just left it. Uh, it's The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Phenomenal movie. I, I love it. I really connect with this character because this is how I used to be when I was in high school. I would just... <laughs> I would be staring, like I could be sitting across from, and I would look like I was staring at someone, but I was totally in another world daydreaming about some crazy thing. But that's what Walter Mitty does. He's He works for Life Magazine, and he spends his time just zoning out and coming up with these crazy um, daydreams where he's doing all kinds of crazy things. And uh, really, really well-made movie. It has some romance, and uh, uh, just it's just a great adventure movie. Um, 
I really enjoyed it. it it's it's definitely a family friendly friendly movie too, which is cool. It, it's actually rated PG. It doesn't really have anything bad in it, and it it's pretty. It's funny and it's just a cool adventure and it's heartwarming. I, I totally enjoyed it and this definitely cracked into my top 10 so you gotta check it out. Alright, next movie here. This is actually one that I just watched this morning and uh, yeah, oh, powerful film with great acting. Uh, it's The Dallas Buyers Club. Really, really good movie. Uh, it's about a man who was into uh, all kinds of promiscuous sex and drugs and he ends up getting him, contracting the HIV virus. Um, and he was under the misconception that only um, homosexual men can get AIDS. And all of his friends think the same thing. So once he's diagnosed, all his friends basically just think he's gay. And they start to um, treat him like crap because of all these uh, stereotypes and rumors that were going around back then. Because this takes place in 1985. And um, so he, he ends up uh, getting injured on the job and goes to the hospital and... They take blood tests and tell him, you know, you got 30 days to live. You have AIDS. And uh, so he, he doesn't give up there. He goes and tries to find any way he can to get treatment. And he what he does is he ends up going to Mexico and um, learning from a doctor there that everything that they're telling you in the United States, the drug that they're pushing in the United States actually doesn't help you, but it will kill you. And that they have drugs, this combination of uh, vitamins and other things and it, it'll actually keep you alive and so he ends up surviving for over a, a year after that and uh, at that time he starts to turn it into a business he uh he um goes to these different foreign countries to find drugs that aren't approved in the u.s but that work to treat um uh the aids epidemic and uh or at least to keep people alive i don't think that there's really a cure but it keeps you alive and uh yeah, so it's it's pretty good. Um, the acting is really good. It's got Jennifer Garner, Jer Jennifer Garner, Jared Leto, and Matthew McConaughey. And uh, Matthew McConaughey and Jared Leto bo both won an Academy Award for the per their performances in this. And yeah, last year was a really good year for McConaughey because he was in a, a whole bunch of really good movies. Um, a lot of good performances by him, but this one was was really really well done. So I recommend this one too. Definitely not a family-friendly movie. There's some scenes that um, I had to skip through because they were just too graphic. Um, There's a couple uh, st nude scenes too, um, but they were they seemed to be pretty short. I fast forward and they were gone in like two seconds. But yeah, so I, I do recommend this one. All right, and the next movie I have here, um, when my friend Luke was up here visiting, he we were at Best Buy and he told me that he really liked this, and um, so. I wanted to wait for it to drop down a little bit and it went down to $15 so I picked it up. It's uh, The Spectacular Now. It's like a coming of age movie. Um, deals with a whole lot of issues but I thought it was really well done. And the acting's pretty good. This guy Miles Teller, I hadn't heard of him but I, I did see him in the movie Divergent. So after I watched this I went and looked him up and all the movies he's been in up until now are just really stupid. Uh, uh, movies that I would just never watch like stuff that I just look at and I say I'm not even going to give it a chance like uh, I think he's in Project X I think that's one of the ones I saw and that just looks so dumb I'll never watch that uh, and 21 and older or something like that that one looks really bad too but he he's a good actor from what I see in this and uh, I also saw that he's going to be playing um, Mr. Fantastic in the Fantastic Four uh, Reed Richards so that's pretty cool um, I think he'll do good in that role. He seems kind of young, but I think he'll... I don't know what story they're basing those movies off of. I honestly haven't read into that at all. So maybe it's um, when he's younger or something. I don't know. But yeah, he's a good actor, and I do recommend this. Um, it's it's pretty good, pretty powerful movie. And it, it like I said, it deals with some issues like uh, teen drinking and um, just some other really good things. But I highly recommend this. I, I do think that The Way Way Back, I like The Way Way Back more. Cause there was a few coming of age movies that came out last year. Uh, like The Way Way Back, um, Kings of Summer, and this one. And I'd probably rate this one slightly above Kings of Summer, but not quite up to The Way Way Back. Uh, next movie I have here is one of my all-time favorites. Because uh, I'm a huge Tom Hanks fan. It's big. They put out this 25th anniversary edition, which has a whole bunch of new features on it. But this is the cool thing that really roped me in. This once I saw saw this, I really had to get it. It uh, you open it up and it plays music. The slipcover. Can you hear that?
right, that's enough. <laughs> Uh, I might have to cut that part out. I don't know how long it lasted. But yeah, I love Big. Um, I'm sure you all know what it's about. A kid wishes that he could grow up and be an adult. And when he wakes up in the morning, he's a fully grown man. He gets a job at a toy store. Classic 80s movie. I love it. Um, next one I have here is one of my favorite television series on TV right now. Possibly even my number one favorite. I'm not quite sure. I have to give it some more thought. But... Now that Breaking Bad's gone, um, this is what's filling the void for me, even though it's very, very, there's very, very few episodes, uh, but it's the third season of Sherlock, and I have the UK edition, because you can get the UK edition slightly earlier than you can get the uh, um, the US, and I already had the first two seasons in uh, from the UK, because they were on sale over there for like, it was less money too, it cost me less to import this than it would to buy the US version. So it was worth it to me. But Martin Freeman and Benedict Cumberbatch, two of the biggest stars right now. And I love both of them. I think they're both phenomenal. I, I watch everything that either of them are in because they're just amazing. But they basically now only put out a season ev once every two years. And there's only three episodes per season, which is just, it sucks because you just want more. But they're so in demand. They Their schedules are so busy. They just can't do more. But from what I hear, they love the series. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really happy to have this. I, I watched all three in like, I think one and a half days. Um, each each episode is about the length of a movie. I think it's like 90 minutes per episode. So it's you get you do get some good content. Each story has some uh, has a lot to it. So that aspect of it is really good. But if you haven't seen Sherlock yet, the first two seasons are on Netflix. So go watch them. They're amazing. All right, the next thing I have here, this is actually uh, one of the first Alfred Hitchcock films I ever saw. It is Foreign Correspondent, and this is the um, Criterion Collection. It's another one of these nice, thick um, cardboard cases. Uh, I actually ordered this online, but I noticed that the top, the corner here, uh, has like a crease in it. So that's why I haven't opened it. I'm going to send it back and get a, try to get another one that doesn't have a... It's just very slightly, but I'm very picky, especially with the Criterion Collection. I want all of my editions to be just, you know, perfect. Every aspect of it I want it to be perfect. But, yeah, it's a really good movie from 1940 uh, about a former correspondent in World War II. Um, yeah. Um, I'm trying, I can't remember the whole story because I, I haven't watched it in about five years, but... I know I really enjoyed it, and I, I can't wait to check it out on Blu-ray, but I just really wanted to show it in this in this update. And once I do get uh, get it a, a copy that's not damaged, I'll open it up so I can show you the inner workings of it. Um, I also recently got the Fantastic Mr. Fox, but I haven't had a chance to go through that whole set yet. So once I do that, I'll probably show both of these together in a video. And uh, if I get any more Criterions in the near future, I'll, I'll throw those in too. I'll make it a Criterion update. All right, and the next thing I have here, this is a DVD, but this was oh, so enjoyable. Um, we rented it when Luke and Connie were here. We rented it on Amazon, um, digital on demand, and it was like two ninety nine to rent, and it was so worth it. Uh, it's a documentary called The King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters, and I had wanted to see this for such a long time, but I completely forgot about it. I, I had read about it, and I really wanted to see it. Like, I read about it like three or four years ago, and I just totally never thought of it again after that. And then um, it just came up in conversation. And I said, man, we have to watch that. So we actually watched it. And Luke filmed a, like a little mini review uh, with with uh, the three of us in the living room after we finished it. But yeah, it's a really good uh, documentary about a guy who's trying to beat a longstanding record on the um, Donkey Kong Jr., I think. Or it might be Don just regular Donkey Kong. I think he might beat it beat a couple of the records because um, we were reading the Wikipedia page after to see what happened after the movie came out. But um, Luke was saying they're actually thinking about making a sequel to this. So I, I really want to see it because it's you have to see it. it. It's great. Even if you don't like documentaries, it's, it's really good. If you're into video games at all, you really like it. Uh, next one I have is another DVD and this is another documentary. This is one of the best documentaries I've ever seen in my life. It's definitely in my top five documentaries. And this was actually sent to me by Luke, um, man, over a year ago. And I, I showed it in a package opening, 
and I had watched it before, but I just recently remembered that he sent it to me and I watched it again and I, I thought, man, I have to show this an update because people need to see this if they haven't already. It's uh, Man on a Wire, unbelievable true story, um, documented by his friends with video cameras. Uh, so it's it's just unbelievable. But um, the what happened um, back in the 70s, I think it was, 1974, he, uh, yeah, that's what it says, 1974, this guy, I, I can't remember his name, he, he was this tightrope walker, a really, really talented tightrope walker, and he would, um, break, they would break into famous landmarks and put the rope, put the wire across and do, do tightrope walking illegally in just these crazy locations, and this guy, I don't know if, I can't even believe that this happened, he put a wire across the Twin Towers back in 1974, the World Trade Center in New York City, and he walked on the wire. It's unbelievable. you got to see this. I, I think this is on Netflix, so if you can't find the DVD, you can pick it up on Netflix. But this is cool because this is a UK edition, and it comes with a slipcover. So that's awesome. But yeah, I totally love this. Um, I, don't know, I don't think it's going to get a Blu-ray release, but it, it's not like it really needs one. A lot of the clips they show were shot on Super 8. Um, I'm sure maybe they can make it look better, but it's fine on DVD. Uh, next thing I have here, this is one that I'm not going to open because I have so many editions of this movie. I just bought it just to add to my collection because uh, Forrest Gump, it's my favorite movie. Um, I've actually been thinking lately that I might possibly change my favorite movie because <laughs> I love this movie, but there's just there's another movie out there that I've been watching so much over and over and over again over the last year, and I... I'm close to saying, you know, it's surpassed in my mind because I'd rather watch that one over this one. But it's hard to say. I I've always said this is my favorite movie since I was a kid, um, since the first time I saw it. And so I'll just stick with that. But this is a French Digibook edition. And um, it's actually, I saw one of these sell for 50 bucks on, on eBay here in the U.S. And there, right now there's none on eBay. So I think it's, it's kind of valuable. So I'm going to keep it sealed up and... Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it. I, I like picking up any edition of Forrest Gump I can get. Next thing I have here, um, I already have the Indiana Jones films in the box set, but uh, man, they put them out on individual release, and I really like the slipcovers. It's the same thing that happened to me with the DVDs. I had the box set, and then they put out the DVDs with basically the same slipcover, but it's just so pretty. So I, I, I have the Raiders of the Lost Ark. I still need to get the other two. The problem I'm having is every time I see it in the store... It's either jacked up to twenty dollars, which this one I got. I find it. I see it for ten all the time, but the, the slip covers are always dinged up. You can't find one that that's a good condition copy. But this one, it was a good condition, and it was only ten dollars. So, unfortunately, um, the Temple of Doom and uh, the Last Crusade were the only copies they had. Were too beat up, so I didn't get it. But yeah, I love Indiana Jones, so I'll, I'll take multiple editions of that. Um, the next one I have here, this isn't one that I just bought. I actually have had this for a while, uh, Silver Linings Playbook. I showed it in a previous update, but the reason I'm showing it again is because I was finally able to get a slipcover for it, so that's cool. I always, I love slipcovers, so I was disappointed to find out after I bought it that there was a slipcover available, and I didn't know, so finally got it. Next movie I have here, this is a great movie I just recently watched again, um, starring Al Pacino and what's his name? Oh, what is this kid's name? Uh, Chris O'Donnell. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Scent of a Woman. Phenomenal film. I always heard the title and thought that uh, it was probably a, a stupid romance movie, but it's totally not. It's a fantastic drama. You gotta check this out if you haven't seen it. You can find the Blu-ray really cheap. Uh, next one I have here, I'm going to show you this first. Uh, this is Fight Club. This was one of the first Blu-rays I ever owned. My mom actually got it for me for Christmas. And I recently saw in the store that they put out a new slipcover for it. So, yeah, that's the only reason I have it, to get a new slipcover. Stupid. But it was really cheap. It was $7, so it's worth it to me. And I'll keep the, the Blu-ray sealed, so, you know, I don't need to open it since I already have it. But, yeah, that's it, guys, for my, my Blu-ray and DVD collection update. Thanks for watching. See you later.